I'm in my uh, I'm in my third year right now. Um, I also I don't live on campus, so I commute every day. Um, so if you have specific questions about that, uh, feel free to ask me. Um, yeah, that's about it. Um, Isra, is that how I pronounce your name? Uh, yeah. Uh, so yeah, hi everyone. My name is Isra. Uh, I'm in my third year as well uh, at Mac for software and I uh, and biomedical engineering. Um, so a little bit of a twist, <laughs> but um, yeah. And I actually lived on Res in first year, and I'm currently on campus. So if you also have any questions about living on Res and stuff, so. Annie? Um, I don't think we can hear you. Hello? Okay, no, now we can. Okay. Yeah, sorry about that. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Annie as well, uh, and I'm currently studying biomedical engineering at the University of Waterloo. I just finished my second year, so I'm entering third year, but I'm on co-op right now. So if you have any questions about co-op or residence, feel free to let me know. Yash, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. My name is Yash. Uh, I'm currently studying software engineering at the University of Waterloo. Um, I also, similar to Annie, just finished my second year, uh, and I'm currently doing my third co-op out of, I think, six. Um, yeah, feel free to ask me any questions about the, the Waterloo application process, about living in res, um, about co-op, anything you want. Happy to help. Okay, um, I'm not sure if our other two panelists are here. John, Salib, um, oh, I'm just, okay. So hi, Isabel, okay. Would you like to introduce yourself? Sure, so yeah, I'm not sure why I can't rename myself on Zoom, but uh, my name's Isabel. Um, I'm a fourth year in electrical engineering at UBC. Um, I was part of the co-op program, which I left later. Unlike uh, other universities, the co-op program is necessary. Um, and yeah, I'm currently I'm currently on uh, my uh, fourth internship here in California. I'll be going back to school next term. So nice to meet you all. Okay, so once again, this is just open floor for anyone to talk about their experience, for anyone to ask questions. Um, I guess I can start first. So. Um, just to engage everyone first, um, is anyone here, does anyone have like a specific engineering program that they're interested in? You can just drop it in the chat. Um, myself, I'm in grade 12 and I'm planning on applying to Waterloo Eng. So um, things like SIDE or BME are both programs that I'm interested in. Um, a question that, I, oh, there's a question here asked by Alyssa. Just wondering how you knew which specific engineering stream you knew you wanted to do. Um, for me, it was uh, it's pretty obvious for me. Um, I always knew I wanted to do something with computers. I was, I was on the edge between computer science and computer engineering. Um, but then in first year, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know if you guys know about it, I took track one engineering instead of, uh, track one's basically general engineering. Uh, I did that just to make sure I really wanted to do computer. So track one, we did like mech, uh, chemical engineering, all that stuff. Um, but then I was still uh, pretty sure I wanted to do computer. So for me, it was a, a no brainer. Um, for others, like their motivation was like the job prospects, stuff like that. Um, yeah. Great, thank you for sharing. And actually there's a question that's directed to you. Um, Lorena asked, how much hardware versus software education in computer engineering is there and which aspects are you the most interested in and how are you able to explore and become prepared to pursue that in the program? Yeah, okay. So the way it works at U of T is uh, if you go into the computer engineering and electrical engineering stream, uh, the first two years are, are identical, right? So you'll learn like, a bunch of circuits, uh, general programming knowledge, um, all that, like, yeah, basically that in the first two years, um, assembly, stuff like that. And then 
third year and fourth year, you can actually like branch out into what you want to do, right? Uh, you can really focus on hardware and just do more circuits, more um, hardware design, signal processing, stuff like that. Or you can go more into the software side, which is what I'm doing, um, and take a lot more courses on like compilers, operating systems, um, just general programming knowledge. Um, you can do a mix of that too. So there's a lot of different courses you can take. Like I want to take a lot of courses, but I can't just because like I don't have time. Um, but like you're really like depending on what you do, you can really really um, there's all like all the choices are there for you. Um, yeah which aspect are you interested in? So I'm, I'm mostly interested in, uh, like I said, I was like on the edge between computer science and computer engineering. So I'm mostly interested in the software side. I do also like working a bit with the hardware, like a bit lower, like operating systems and stuff like that. Um, but I don't like actually designing chips and stuff. That can be kind of, uh, I'm not good with that. Uh, how are you able to explore and become prepared to pursue that? Uh, for me, I started like, I like programming. So like I started programming and like, grade nine or 10, just for the heck of it. Um, but honestly, like a lot of people in first year, second year, they never touched, like they've never programmed anything in their life before and they're in computer engineering with me right now. Um, and they're doing fine. I, I will say though that like, it does help a lot uh, to have like pr previous programming experience because a lot of a lot of like courses and stuff require, like, require it. And if you already have experience, it becomes much easier. Um, but yeah, like you don't have to have any previous experience to, uh, to be able to do the program. Um, uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Hey, would anyone else like to share, um, how they chose their stream of engineering? Oh, oh sorry. Uh, I, I can, thank you. Yeah. Um, so back in high school, I did an internship for a professor at York University, and it was in biomechanics engineering. And I really fell in love with that um, after that particular internship. So I would definitely recommend if you, you know, know that you want to pursue a particular area, try to do that as an internship before high school, uh, during before university. So in high school, just to see if that is something you enjoy. And a work experience is very reflective of what your everyday life will be in the future once you're a full-time worker. So definitely recommend doing that. Um, and also do your research into the program. I, I knew I was still kind of on the fence about biomedical engineering. So I did a lot of research into the Waterloo program. And what you'll realize is that the University of Waterloo Biomedical Engineering program is very much a generalist engineering program. You do a little bit of everything. And um, at third and fourth year, you'll be able to do a particular option or a specialization. So for me, I'm choosing computer science. So my degree is very much computer science-based biomedical engineering. And that is, I think a lot of schools have that customizability. So definitely do your research before you apply. Uh, on my end, I actually, this is the only engineering program I apply to, given software engineering is what it is. Every other program I apply to is computer science related. Um, and I think the reason I was able to pick it was because I had a pretty high degree of confidence coming into the program that I enjoyed programming uh, because I'd done an internship and I'd done a bunch of projects in high school. Um, and I think especially with software, you know, it's really, really easy for you to try it out yourself at home without needing anything else, right? Because all you really need is a laptop and an internet connection to be able to learn programming or to see if you like it or not. And so if you're trying to figure out whether or not it's the right fit for you or not, uh, you know, try taking some courses online, try making some things yourself. And it's, you know, fairly reflective of what day-to-day -day work may typically look like. Obviously working in a company in a larger team is different, but the core like crux of what makes it interesting, if you find it interesting or not, it's very easy to validate. So if that's something you are on the fence about, I recommend just trying it and see what happens. Okay, um, is there, I think you wanted to go earlier, I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, I can go. Um, so I, so like I said, I'm at Mac uh, for software and uh, biomed. Um, so in high school, I kind of always knew that I wanted to do a little bit of um, the biomedical engineering. Um, I used to do a lot of like health related uh, clubs in high school. So like HOSA, for example, um, I competed in there for a couple of years. Um, and especially like my friends and I, we were able to place in the biomedical innovation uh, group. And that was really fun for me. I really like that. So that kind of 
um, pushed me into biomedical engineering. But um, so like I said, I'm doing software and biomed um, because my program, it's like you do biomed and you do some other engineering with it. Uh, like you kind of pair them together. Um, so in first year, I kind of thought like, oh, I would go into like chem and because I really like chemistry and whatnot. But as I went through it and I uh, did a little bit more coding, I got a little bit more hands-on experience. I realized that like, oh, software is actually kind of like what I'm leaning more towards. So if you are going into like a general first year, um, I find that really helpful deciding on what you want because a lot of your high school experiences, unless, unless you've obviously done like internships and whatnot, they're not as reflective of what you might experience in the workforce and whatnot. So um, that's kind of how I decided. So, yeah. Uh, okay, so this was a very common question. So for Yash and for Annie, how did you guys um, present yourself on your AIF? What did you include on it? And what do you think set you apart from other applicants? Uh, I. I can maybe tackle that first. Um, so a couple of things about the AIF. Um, firstly, you know, as much as there's so much talk about the AIF, uh, I think in engineering, it can give you up to like 15 additional points. And so your marks play a significantly larger factor in admissions than your AIF do. But specifically talking about the AIF, uh, one thing to keep in mind is that you don't have a lot of space. And so because of that, you need to really figure out the crux of like, what things have you done that you feel could really, really relate very solidly to the program that you're trying to enter. Um, I think in my case, it was a little bit more straightforward because I already had work experience and projects that I could talk about. But if you don't, you know, something you can spend your time talking about in the AIF is um, presumably something that Waterloo cares about is how employable you'll be. Um, and that doesn't necessarily just mean hard work skills, but that includes soft skills as well. So framing any non-technical related clubs within the context of how you think it can help you be successful at Waterloo, both in co-op and in academics, is a pretty good way of contextualizing it and phrasing things on your AIF. Yeah, so I think what is really important for the AIF is um, definitely your marks, extracurriculars, and more importantly, work experience and work experience of any sort. Even if it's not an internship related to your field, if you've worked at McDonald's as like a register at the register, or even you know bagging people's groceries, that's a big plus in terms of like the missions people. Um, because uh, when you're in the Waterloo program, you have to work co-ops every four months. And just having that experience reporting to a boss, being in a professional environment will really set you apart. And I'm going to contradict Yash a little bit uh, because for the side BME program, we actually don't value marks as much as uh, maybe some other engineering programs do because a huge part of the systems design department's values is that you know we really value volunteer experience, so volunteer just that like love for your community and leadership. So if you can show that in your AIF, especially if you're applying to side or BME, that would be really helpful. Right, and while we're on the topic of Waterloo, someone earlier asked, um, what average do you need for software engineering and whether contest scores are weighed heavily? Um, to be honest, I don't know anymore. Um, I think like a really good way to check, I'm sure they still do the little graph thing, right? For engineering where they have like your averages and like what percent of chance you have. So I think that's like a really good reference. Um, and on math contests, the way it was explained to me back when I was applying is there's like three, you can call them tiers of doing math contest. One is like not doing them at all, which is the worst thing you can do. One is doing them. And then the third one is doing them and then getting like a really, really high score. So. I would recommend that specifically for math contests, if even if you just do them, that's a lot better than not doing them. And that automatically improves your chances, even if it's marginally. And then, so my advice for that is to just try the best you can. I don't think software engineering cares as much as the math faculty, uh, but I mean, just enter and see what happens. You know, you might as well. Right. Okay. So enough about software engineering for now. Isabel, someone asked to maybe have you explain electrical engineering at UBC a bit more and just talk about it more in detail. Sure, I'd love to. So um, one thing to note in, uh, in specific is that uh, UBC is not a direct entry program. So you do have to do um, a general first year. Um, so that means that once, at, once you're at the end of your first year, you would apply to 
uh, your program of choice. So personally, it's kind of weird. Uh, I was dead set on computer engineering. And then uh, later on, I realized that I didn't want to do only software for the rest of my life. Um, I want to do a bit more of hardware. I want to get more into the robotics side. And one thing that's so great about electrical engineering, specifically at uh, UBC, is that you have such a great selection of courses. So as an electrical engineer, um, I can become a software engineer. Uh, actually, most of my internships have been in software. I can work in computer architecture, um, making computer chips. That's another one of my co-ops. Uh, I can become a robotics engineer, uh, which is pretty much what I want to do later on. I can do, work in firmware embedded. Uh, power electronics, energy conversion, you can shift a bit more on this side of me uh, mechanical engineering if I want, or a bit more on the uh, software side. So those are all the options that I have as an electrical engineering student, uh, which I really like. And um, uh, if you get in the co-op program, um, you have such a large selection of uh, jobs that you can apply to instead. You're not just restricted to hardware jobs. Uh, you can get in anything. So I've done some, so far I've done two internships in software. I'm currently working at Tesla as the firmware and electrical engineer. So I've kind of shifted my path here a bit more on the electrical side. Um, Course-wise, uh, second year is definitely the hardest. That's where you get hit by all of the uh, very, very hard electrical courses. So in my program specifically at UBC, um, UBC uh, electrical engineering is said to be one of the easiest programs to get in because they accept the most people, but it's also the, hard work to, the hardest one to stay in because the electrical concepts are so hard to get. It's not like it's not like you can use a debugger to um, to see what the problem is in a circuit. Um, you have to physically do it with uh, oscilloscopes and debugging tools, and um, it's quite hard to debug once you get to that point. But uh, I think it's the best decision that I've ever made uh, personally. Yay! Thank you so much. And actually, following that, someone asked, um, "What should be or what are some of the extracurricular activities that we can do to reflect our passion for EE?" Yeah. So the other great thing that's uh, there about UBC are our design teams. So we have so 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 many design teams. We have some in software. We have some. You can make submarines. You can make concrete toboggans. You can make a steel bridge. We have the formula electric design team to make cars. We have super mileage, which focuses on a sustainable energy. Um, <clears throat> we have a drone club, we have a drone design team. Um, so to channel your passion in uh, electrical engineering, I'm, I'm suspecting that's before in high school or is, would that be in university? Um, if it's before, in yeah. yeah. If it's before university, um, nothing stops you. Um, nothing stops you from doing your own projects on, on the side. So what I did in high school, I took a coding uh, course in class and I kind of pursued that passion of mine. Uh, I continued doing some projects on the side. I developed an Android application just for fun, even though that's not quite electrical engineer, but that proves that you know, you're interested in learning more about engineering in specific. Um, you can read more about uh, circuits, um, you can buy yourself some little breadboards. Those are actually very cheap. You can buy yourself some wires, start wiring stuff up with lights. Um, you can get yourself an LCD screen. Um, but I would very much recommend um, just upping your programming skills because that's a skill that's very important in any engineering discipline that you're going to get into, whether it's electrical, computer, software, even civil. You still need coding skills. You're going to do that in first year. Um, so I think programming is a very cheap way to do it and a very, very efficient um, way to improve your skills in any engineering discipline. All right, so now that we've heard about um, electrical engineering, someone also asked for our two panelists who are in BME to explain a bit more about their program. So Isra and Annie, I'm gonna let you guys take it. Yeah, I was actually just typing a, a response actually. Um, I was gonna say like, especially in biomedical engineering, there's so many different career opportunities and like different paths that you can take with um, biomedical engineering. So the reason why my program at Mac, uh, we pair it with another engineering actually is because of the fact that there are so many like different opportunities. So uh, for example, like one career, one very popular career path is like the biomedical and electrical engineering. So there you can do um, a lot of like, um, for example, like, um, pacemakers uh, and a lot of like the gear, uh, like the medical gear that's needed uh, in hospitals and whatnot, like a lot of that's like uh, electrical. If you wanna do materials engineering and biomedical engineering, a lot of that that's prosthetics and whatnot, um, implants, 
uh, for me, I'm doing software engineering. So uh, my interest kind of lies in like med, uh, med tech. So like uh, the interse intersection of like the medical field and technology and how we can use software to improve the medical field. Um, so uh, again, uh, especially within <laughs> with biomed, uh, you can take it in so many different routes. Um, and again, that's one of the reasons why my program, like we pair it with another engineering, pro uh, with another engineering discipline to kind of help us focus um, on that. Yeah, so I, I, I agree. Um, BME is very much a generalist program or a jack of all trades. And BME these days have very much become a field rather than a specific discipline of biomedical engineering. So for example, if you're working for a biomedical engineering company, you, you generally do like electrical engineering or software engineering. So things that you like other people might have specialized in. So in undergraduate, a lot of what we do is try out like different disciplines of engineering. Like we do some hardware work, we do some software work, we do some systems work, everything. And you kind of find your footing in what you like. And generally speaking, if you pursue that particular line of engineering, that would be really helpful. So for me right now, it, I'm very much leaning towards software engineering and product management. So for me, um, what I see myself doing in the future is likely product management in the field of biomedical engineering. So you got, for people interested in biomedical engineering, it, yeah, like definitely consider pursuing a particular line of work before you enter the biomedical field. Thank you. Um, this was a question from a bit earlier. I'm sorry, I've been just scrolling through the chat trying to find questions. Um, but someone earlier asked, what's the difference between software engineering and computer engineering? So Omar and Yash, since you guys are in those two programs, um, would you like to answer that? Sure. Um, so one of the major differences is that software engineering has more of a software focus and computer engineering is more of like a hardware type thing. Uh, something else that's worth mentioning is just because it's there, there's also computer science. So here's how I can kind of explain this. Computer science is very theoretical and a lot more mathematical focused. Software engineering is focused a lot more on practical aspects. And as a part of our course load, we also have to take some mandatory electrical and computer, computer engineering courses as a graduation requirement. And then I think Omar can expand a little bit more on computer engineering. Can you uh, repeat the question? I was uh, answering a question in the chat. Oh yeah, they were just asking the difference between uh, software and computer eng. Um, so like, yeah. So from my understanding, software doesn't deal that much with hardware, if, if I'm correct. Uh, it's like I said, like, for the first two years um, in my program, a lot of it was hardware, right? Like circuits, uh, what do you call it? Like hardware components, CPUs, all that stuff. Um, we worked a lot on that in the first two years and uh, we got really low level. Like sometimes we'd even like work with binary to try to get computer work. Um, I don't think software engineering does that as much. So with computer engineering, you, you, have, a, you have an understanding of like the hardware too. Um, and the software. So I'd say the, the biggest difference is just the hardware side of things. Um, yeah. Okay, and actually, since we've heard a lot about like specific programs, do you guys want to share why you chose your specific schools? So like Andre, why did you, ch or Isabel, why did you choose UBC? Annie, why did you choose Waterloo? Things like that. Sure. So um, actually, originally I was um, going, I wanted to go to McGill because uh, I'm French, but I got rejected. So I went to UBC instead. Um, personally, what I love so much about uh, UBC is that, uh, well, one, we have the Bichon campus, two of them actually, we're like right at the tip of an island. Uh, UBC is like its own, um, its own little island. So I'm, I'm actually from Waterloo. So I, I visited the UW campus a bunch of times. It's, it's very differently spaced. It's, it's like, it's its own city because we're very remote from the city. Um, so we have the mountains there. You can literally transit like an hour and a half uh, by bus. You can get in the mountain, uh, do some nice hikes. We have the whole like Alpines in our backyard, oh, which is amazing. Sorry? Do QBC. Yep, yeah. at QBC. Yeah, so we're in Vancouver in uh, British Columbia. Um, what I love so much is how natural it is. Like um, our campus specifically is, makes a lot of effort to be green. Um, they're banning straws, they're using all reusable um, um, 
cutlery and everything, um, you're really, really encouraged to bring your own cuts. And I suspect that in the future, um, they'll probably remove the, the, the paper cuts. They're doing some mug share uh, programs. Um, it's just a very, very sustainable environment here. Another thing that I really love is the amount the of to you? design teams. Sorry? How she says it's so pretty. It's always been. But it is know. gorgeous. Let's go. Why don't you and I go? Right now? Uh, uh, let's I go think on that's the weekend. <laughs> you can see? Yeah. First Columbia. Yeah. Check out the campus. Um, I'm going to ask you to mute and not interrupt our panelists. <laughs> Oh, okay. I mean, no worries. Um, but yeah, it, it is very beautiful. You get cherry blossoms in, um, in spring. Um, you can go to the beach. What I love the most is going to the mountains. I go maybe every two weeks. Um, and the scenery is just gorgeous, unlike anything I've seen uh, in Ontario from where I'm from. So, um, Actually, while you're at it, someone asked, how is the co-op program there? And what do you think about the fact that you have to get into it? Um, so yeah, the co-op program at UBC, um, I don't know how it is at uh, UFT, but I know that at UW it is mandatory. Uh, at UBC, it's not mandatory. You actually have to apply to it um, in, in second year once you get into your program. Uh, for my program specifically, or actually for all um, uh, engineering programs uh, at UBC, you have a total of five terms. Um, I believe at UFT it's three terms, at UW it's six terms. Um, here we have five terms, four months each. Um, and we have different sequences of co-ops that you can choose from. So for EC specifically, you can either take um, a four month co-op, go back to school, then do a 12 month co-op, go back to school and do another four months. Um, wait, that doesn't add up. Four or five, yeah, that, that, that adds up. Um, or you can do a um, eight months, eight months and then four months, or you can do um, four months and then 16 months. Um, it's very flexible. So if you get into um, UBCC, um, our courses are actually offered every year, or I mean every term, so that means that you can actually change your co-op sequence, and that's what I did. So um, I did, during COVID, I did four months, and I decided I want to stay an extra four months at that company. So I changed my co-op sequence, I had to apply for it, I told them I want to stay an extra four months, and they changed my co-op sequence, and as long as you can find a way to fit your courses in between, um, that will work for you. Um, and then I actually decided to do an extra co-op term, so instead of um, five terms, I'll be doing six terms because of COVID I could take courses online. So that's what I decided to do. Uh, so it's very, very uh, flexible here. Um, does anyone else wanna share why they chose their specific university? Sure, um, I can share that. Um, so, so I was actually debating between U of T and Waterloo because I'm personally from um, Toronto myself. And I guess like essentially the biggest reason why I chose Waterloo and I'm sure it's very similar for a lot of people is for the co-op program. It's like we have a job portal called Waterloo Works and it is so, so extremely helpful when you're looking for your first few co-ops because when you're a first year without much experience and whatever field you, you wanna work in, it might be really hard to get hired and generally those jobs end up going to like upper years um, if you're applying outside. So the Waterloo job portal, big, big bonus. And also the fact that we get six continuous work terms. Not continuous, but like we get six work terms, yeah. Uh, for me, um, so I was debating between Mac and U of T. I got into NSI at U of T, uh, but the whole reason why I kind of chose Mac was um, pretty much the environment, to be honest. Um, especially with my program, like we're one of the smaller programs. Uh, there's only 150 students, I believe, uh, at least in my year. Um, and as a result of that, there's like a lot of um, there's a lot of camaraderie, which I really appreciate. Um, I know, like. Uh, in other universities or in other programs, it can be a lot, um, a lot of more competitiveness, which isn't an environment that I believe I could thrive in. So um, the whole reason why I chose Mac over um, other programs is um, the welcoming environment and all the support that I uh, seemed um, or that they were like showing off during uh, May at Mac, for example, and all those open houses. I went to open houses for uh, Waterloo. Um, and Mac, and maybe some others, but I can't remember. Um, but yeah, uh, Mac just stood out to me in terms of like camaraderie and um, that whole welcoming um, environment. Um, 
Uh, for me, really similar to what Annie said about the co-op program, um, I think I was picking, I was primarily trying to decide between Waterloo, honestly, between Waterloo programs, between SE, CS, and CSBBA. Um, I ended up picking software engineering because I figured that from like from what I knew at the time, it's pretty easy if you decide that software engineering isn't from you and you want to switch into computer science, it's pretty, pretty easy to make that switch. But the other way around is a little bit harder. And that was mainly my rationale for picking software engineering. Um, and so far, I've liked it and haven't switched. So it's been pretty good. Yeah, I want to add on to that. It was pretty similar for me. So for me, I was deciding between CS uh, and computer engineering. And the, 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 like the tipping point was basically like what he said. It's pretty easy to go from computer engineering to computer science later on compared to the other way around. Um, like we have some computer science courses in computer engineering, but there aren't that many engineering courses in computer science. Um, so that was also why I chose engineering at the end. Hey, um, so thank you everyone for actually dropping their LinkedIn or their socials in the chat. If you guys have questions that are unanswered later on, um, you can reach out to them through those. But actually I noticed that Karthik, you've had your hand up for a while. Um, if you have a question, you can open up and ask. Yeah, yeah, thank you very much. So uh, do you mind if I just unmute? Because it's like, <laughs> it's just easier. So yeah, all inputs are appreciated, but like this is specifically catered toward Yash. Um, so it's about software development. Um, so currently I'm like very invested in competitive programming. So I do like the CCC competition and like data structures and algorithms. And it's a massive investment on its own because it takes a lot of time. So I've been wondering how you'd get into project development because it really helps in AIFs and also just, you know, an interesting thing. And I think it's like more related to software engineering, but you know, there's mobile development, web development, data science, there's so much. So how do you, what would you recommend on like navigating your way through and like getting started on it? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I'm going to give you a piece of advice that's said quite a lot, but uh, I'll like add some context to it. So, you know, whenever people ask questions about like what projects to use, what frameworks to use, the typical answer is always like, do whatever interests you the most, right? Um, and, I, and I think that's actually like a pretty good piece of advice, especially within the context of an AIF. Um, and I'll give like my own personal example because it helps you talk about things like and create a more interesting or compelling story that explains your interest in engineering. I can give you an example for myself, right? Uh, when I was really, really young, I was diagnosed with malaria when I was like six or seven. And so then the side project that I worked on, I worked alongside some people at this like biotech startup I was working at in relation to like this machine learning thing related to malaria. To be honest, when I look back at the code, I've taken it off my GitHub. It's not that great. It's not super impressive. It's not this crazy project or anything, but the fact that I could relate the projects that I was working on to my own personal experiences and to my own personal interests, I think really helped it stand out in the AIF. And so I think when you're thinking about specific domains, um, that's a little easier to talk about because uh, I think web development is a really, really easy way to create side projects that are very visual and are very easy to share because you just have to drop like a website link. Um, and then in terms of like what to pick, just pick something that you can talk about or that like really, really interests you because it it isn't just general advice. It genuinely has like real tangible benefits in terms of like what you talk about in your application. I hope that makes sense. Um, right. Yeah, pretty much. Right. So um, this person just asked, did you guys apply to multiple engineering programs in the same university or just the most competitive one? So in general, I'd say it's important to apply to as many universities as you can, which whatever is like financially doable for you because applications are expensive um, because you won't have a backup plan in case your plan doesn't work. So my plan didn't work um, for my first choice and end up getting uh, my second choice, um, which was uh, UBC. Um, so you never know what might happen. Like sometimes maybe one of the grades that they require, for example, I know uh, McGill has like a strict prereq that you need to have 85% above um, all their grades. Um, so that's what cut me out of there. And you don't know what the, what's the quality of the students that's gonna be like um, for the program that you apply for. Um, so I'd say usually like four, maybe up to five is like a, a good bet on how many universities you can apply to. It really depends on uh, what you, where your interests are. 
like where your bar is going to be, like, where do you want to cut off? Like, no, I'm not going to choose this university anyways. Um, so I'd say like a minimum of three is a safe bet. Yeah, so for the University of Waterloo, um, I believe you get to rank like two of the program. So like the, you have the first choice and then you have a second choice program and you automatically get, get considered for both. So for, I know for biomedical engineering and software engineering that Yash is in, um, they're, you're only allowed to pick them as your first choice. So if biomedical engineering or software engineering is something that you're considering, um, do rank that as your first choice for Waterloo. And then as a backup, pick something that you know you, you feel like you would also enjoy doing as well if, if you didn't get into your first choice. Um, but generally speaking, I think when you're applying to schools, generally speaking, it's easier to transfer from a more competitive program to like a less competitive discipline within you know the engineering faculty. So um, obviously it's up to your own personal interest, but if you're you know on the fence and deciding between two, then I would personally rank the more competitive one first. Um, and then the less competitive one second, just in case you want to transfer in the future. Um, I want to add on to that. So um, when you, for Waterloo, when you, uh, what do you call it, put your first priority and your second priority, um, let's say you want to get, let's say your first priority is software engineering and your second one is computer. Um, it's harder for you to get into computer engineering than if you just put it as your first uh, priority, like they, if, like they, uh, it just makes it harder for you. So if, you, if you're not 100% sure you can get into software engineering, but 100% sure you can get into computer engineering, uh, maybe think about putting that as your first option, just completely taking software out. Because I know when I was applying, I think software engineering had like cut off at around like 95 or something like that. And computer is a bit lower at around like 92. Um, that was like three years ago. Um, so if you're like, Pretty sure you can get to computer, and not so sure about software. Maybe think about putting computer first, because if you don't, you can get rejected from both. Um, yeah. Uh, something else I wanted to add specifically to that distinction. Uh, it's worth mentioning that I do know quite a few people who are at Waterloo who aren't necessarily in their first choice of what engineering stream they wanted to be in, but they're still having a great time here. Um, for example, especially with software and computer engineering, and even with BME, as Annie mentioned, a lot of the job opportunities overlap quite a bit. Uh, you know, like, especially if you're interested in something like tech or like a SWE or like a hardware related role, you know, many of the engineering streams do offer those same opportunities. So um, like thinking about it a, a bit more strategically like that, um, it can definitely be beneficial because I think overall the co-op program is really great across a wide variety of streams. Okay, um, actually this was a question from earlier. Um, wait, let me find it real quick. So someone asked if our average is at the minimum requirement for the program, ignoring the supplementary application, are our chances of getting accepted high or more so 50-50? To be honest, I don't think anyone here could tell you for sure because admissions is basically just as much of a black box to us as it is for you. Um, I think asking the people in who are running the respective programs at some sort of career fair is probably your best bet to kind of figure that out. Yeah, I want to add on to that. So like you said, it's a complete black box. Like we don't know anything really for the most part, or at least I don't, <laughs> um, what do you call it? For, for U of T, Computer engineering or general, I think the cutoff was like around like a 92 or 93 uh, when I was applying. Um, but then I know some people who got in with like an 89. Um, so they could have had like a really strong uh, supplementary application, um, which got them in even though they didn't meet the cutoff. So um, yeah, but if you have if you have like you no know, supplementary and you're not meeting the cutoff, then I. I don't know what your chances are, to be honest. Yes, yeah, so personally, I'm going to add to that. I did apply to UW as well in computer engineering. Uh, I most definitely did not have an average in the 95s, uh, but I got in computer engineering anyways. So I, that's why I think that UW takes a lot of, um, of weight on the extracurriculars that you do, or if you've had any uh, kind of leadership position, 
Um, I think they also put more weight on whether you are from Ontario, from within the province, versus whether like you're from outside the province. I know people that had, um, like their averages were a lot higher than mine, but they still didn't get in. Um, and they were from Alberta or from some different province. Um, so those are just guesses that I have because um, it's not really known how they decide um, admission. Um, but yeah, uh, grade isn't the main, uh, grade isn't the only um, aspect that they take into account for sure. Right, so we have about three minutes left. If you guys have more questions, we can keep it coming. Uh, so like someone asked, um, Yash and Annie, do you know how big electrical engineering is at Waterloo? Um, is it harder to get in than C and SE? I mean, from what I understand, I think you apply to, you do like a general, uh, I mean, feel free to correct me if someone knows better, but you do like a general thing in your first year for electrical and computer, and then you can choose to specialize. I do know that computer engineering is overwhelmingly more popular to get into than electrical engineering when they do choose to specialize in that program. Um, I'm not too sure about the specifics, but feel free to hit me up later. I know a bunch of people in EC who I can connect you with. Yeah, I think um, based on my conversation with friends in ECE, they, you can transfer between EE and CE really easily if you get into the general ECE program, but CE is definitely more like popular and maybe more competitive just based on the fact that it's more popular. And the class size is about like 300, but I think they split you up in, in four cohorts. Um, so you can do the math on that, on how big your cohort is. So you might not get to talk to like everyone in ECE, but you'll definitely get to mingle within your cohort. And just something else to add for ECE, get to pick between stream A and stream four for your co-op study like sequence. So that's something where, that you might want to look into if you're. All right, so there was a lot of questions about extracurriculars. Are extracurriculars important? What type of extracurriculars did you guys do? So you guys can maybe briefly talk about that for the remaining two minutes. Yeah, sure. Um, so I, uh, I was in a bunch of things in high school, um, the basketball team, uh, DECA, yearbook club, stuff like that. I think like it's good to have experiences, but make sure they're like experiences you can talk about that you can say like, hey, this is what I learned, this is what it helped me do, stuff like that. Um, if you just have like, if you just join clubs, never attend, never do anything, just to like list on your application, it's not, like it might help you a bit, but what they really want is for you to like explain like what you learned and what you contributed and stuff like that. Um, I, I definitely say it is important, especially for the more competitive programs, because you could have like 100 people with a 95 average or a 94 average, and then what sets you apart from those people, right? Like they need something to like differentiate. Um, so it's definitely important. You should try to do something. Um, and yeah, don't, don't just join clubs that you're never going to do anything in. Like I said, just uh, make sure you learn stuff. Even if it's just like two clubs or one club, but you have like a lot of things that you've done. Um, I think that's, uh, that's important. We have 50 seconds. Um... I know if there are questions that were unanswered, can we just have like the panelists drop their socials again so people can contact you there? Um, but yeah, I'm so sorry if we didn't get to answer your question. There was a lot of questions and I hope that you guys learned something from this um, breakout session. We'll be returning to the main session just so that Jenny can end off the, uh, the Canadian part and then we'll move on to the American one. Um, but yeah, everyone drop a big thank you to our panelists. Thank you so much for being so supportive and answering all the questions. Um, yeah, no problem. Bye. Thanks, everyone. See you around.